Hi and welcome to this video tutorial. In today's video I would like to show you how to easily and quickly publish your Access database on the web. When we're done with this video you're going to be able to have a search interface on your website that allows you to search your data. So now click on search here, see the results and my data set I have all the libraries inside California so if I wanted to drill down to details I can click on this link and see additional info about that library. I can also click on search again and that will take me back to the search form. Let me show you my database. I have a single table inside my access database and here are all my records and it's a very typical table you have your columns and all the records below it. Keep in mind you can have additional tables, you can have lookup tables, user tables, but unique IDs and you can upload your data into Caspio as many tables as you have inside your application. Now let's go back to our Caspio account and let me show you how this interface was built for the website. When inside your Caspio account you're going to be taken to your dashboard page. I'm going to go ahead and click on new app and we're going to build this application by importing data. So click on this button and let's call this maybe access demo. You can call it whatever you want. And then let's locate our access file on our computer wherever you saved it. Click next. And then Caspio is going to take a few seconds to upload the data. And this specific table has 1100 records. Once you're done, click on next. And then we have a couple of screens here that we have to go through inside the wizard. We have the table name. You have a couple of options here. You can create a new table. You can replace a table. You can append new data to your existing tables or you can update design if you have additional columns inside of your new table that you're uploading. So we're going to say create new and because I already have this table inside my account, Caspi will automatically give it a different name for destination object. Go ahead and click on next and in this screen Caspi will give you a sample view of your data inside your Caspi account and directly above it you can change the data type of each one of your columns. So just in case Caspio doesn't recognize the type of field that is when you're uploading the data, you can manually change that to any one of these data type options that we have. You can also exclude columns if you don't wish to upload uh, any particular column. Click on import and that should complete the import process. Alright, there we go. You can see the, the table name or the application name. You can see all the records. Click on close. And here is our access demo application that we just created. Go ahead and click on open now. Go directly to your tables. And here is the table that we just created by uploading our libraries from access database to your Caspio account. You can click on open to view the data just like you would in access database. Or you can click on table design and this will allow you to add additional fields or modify existing fields inside your table. Now let's go ahead and go to data pages and this is where you're actually going to build the web interface for your website. So click on new data page and Caspio's wizard allows you to build a lot of different app interfaces for your website. You can build submission forms, update forms, reports, calendars, charts and HTML data pages. In our example, we're going to build a basic tabular report. And if you look at this illustration below, this is exactly what you're going to be building. So we have the search form, we have the results page, and we have the details page. Click next. This is where you're going to link your table to your app interface. And for our example, we have this table here. You can apply a different style. This is for the aesthetics, the look and feel of your report. I'm going to go with our sample style that we have preloaded. I'm going to go with the English localization and let's call this libraries report. Click next. I'd like to have a search form so let's enable this radio button and in my search form I would like to search based on library name, city and maybe zip code. And just to clarify what I'm, what I'm doing here by these three search fields, if you look at our website example these are the three search fields that we're going to be filtering our data on. So this is the screen that we're setting up inside the wizard at the moment. 
Click Next, and let's modify each one of our search fields. We have the library name, that's the label. It's set up as a text field equal comparison type. Well, instead of text field, why don't we make this a drop down? We're going to do both custom values and lookup table. So select both. And in the first option in my drop down, I'd like to be able to search all libraries. Delete the value because you're not really searching for this. And then the lookup table will automatically select your library name column from your libraries table. The next field is city. Uh, we can leave it as a text field and comparison type instead of equal I'm actually going to select contains if I leave it as equal that means I have to know the exact city but if I put it as contains it only allows me to search based on keyword or partial letters of that full city name same thing for zip code contains on this screen let's select what fields we would like to display on the results page so let's have library name address city and let's have them all the way up until the square feet and square feet I'm gonna include this in the details page so let's click next I'm not going to make any modifications on the results page on this page I'm gonna allow for 25 results to display on the results page let's enable the details page and let's drag all the fields to the details view and by default, when you modify the details fields, you'll see that everything is display only, all the fields. Or in other words, it's read only, which means the users cannot make any changes. But in Caspio, keep in mind that you can also create editable fields. You can create password protection. You can build a full-on application. So let's click Finish here. And here is our report. Inside Caspio, right away, you can preview this to see what it looks like. And as you can see, it looks very much like our actual live example. And once you click search, you're going to see the results. And then when you click on details, you can drill down to the additional information about that library. So now that we're happy with the look and feel of the preview of the report, let's actually embed this report into a website. So right next to preview, you'll see deploy. Click on enabled. And you have four different ways to embed this application. The number one way is to uh, embed it into a website by copying this code and pasting that code into your HTML. That's one way you can share this with uh, your users. Another way is to use a direct link, so just a URL to the report. You can also use Frame or .NET if you have a SharePoint environment or .NET, uh, any kind of a .NET environment you can embed this into. For our example, let's use the embed model. Let's copy the code, click on close. And I have set up a sample template where I'm going to be embedding that report into. So let me open up my HTML script. And there's my demo link, demo URL. I'm going to go ahead and just paste that code right over here. Now keep in mind that I am fairly technical myself. I work directly inside the code. Um, if you are using GoDaddy, Wix, Yola, WordPress, or any other CMS system, just know that Caspio is compatible with those tools as well. And all you have to do is just find the placeholder on your website, paste that code, and publish your website. And once you publish your website, all you have to do is refresh your page. And you're going to be able to see that report seamlessly embed into your website. And now your users can search the data, see the results, and drill down to details just like you can in an access database, except now everyone has access to it on the web and they can easily access the data from anywhere as long as they have access to the internet. That concludes the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, please let us know. Thanks for watching.